Jeff Hudson, host of The Bible Show on evolutionpop.com, Ramonda Davis. Today's lesson, <clears throat> filthy lucre, filthy lucre. Now, there was a couple of different ways I was thinking about doing this. I was just going to say like prosperity ministry or, you know, the rich versus the poor. But, you know, there's I like to use terms that are actually in the Bible. Filthy lucre is in the Bible. We'll start to show off, starting off with the definition of lucre. L-U-C-R-E, lucre. Here's the handy dandy Webster, Merriam-Webster dictionary. Go to any dictionary, it's gonna have a similar definition, I'm sure. And Romana, what does lucre mean? It means you all, <laughs> certain type of pastors got their greedy hands in poor people's pockets, point blank. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy lucre. That's not <laughs> according to the Merriam-Webster dictionary. Okay, here we go. According to the dictionary, monetary gain, such as profit, wrote almost entirely for lucre, also meaning money. Money, profit, gain. Is that today's ministry, the, the Christian churches today, prosperity ministry? They all want filthy lucre. Let's read some scriptures about this. First scripture we're going to go to is 1 Peter. And that's where this filthy look was. Well, it's in there a couple of times. But let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter 5, verse 1. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder, since Peter talking, and a witness of the suffering of sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God, which is among you. So you pastors, you priests, you elders, feed the flock of God, which is among you, the flock being your ministry, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, not for gain, but of a ready, of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's, lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. So you're supposed to be an example to your ministry. If you're a priest, you're a teacher, you're supposed to be an example. You're not supposed to be, you know, gouging them for loot and jets and big houses. Yeah, fancy cars. Fancy cars. Neither as being lords over God's heritage. You know, I'm a lord over God's heritage. You do what I did. No, you're just a regular person just like anybody else. Verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, that's Jesus Christ, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, well, okay, all we need is one through four. Well, I'm going to break that down for y'all real simple. <laughs> <laughs> you greedy pastors, stop stealing from your flock. There you go. Bottom line. <laughs> stop stealing. Stop making yourself rich, again, off of poor people, off your flock. Mm -hmm. Stop doing it. Yeah, that's not gonna stop. Well, gotta make them stop. Yeah, one way or the other. That's when it's gonna stop. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one way or the other, you'll stop. Let's read some more. Let's go to Titus. Titus chapter one. And pick it up at verse four. Titus chapter one, verse four. To Titus. Now, this is this is Paul writing to Titus. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, as one, and Lord Jesus Christ our Savior, that's two. Where's the Holy Ghost? Mm. Not God. Important, but not God. Verse five, for this cause left I thee in Crete, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders, elders in every city as I had appointed thee. Now this is the criteria for an elder that Paul is telling Titus to gather. If any be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of riot or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Wow. Not given to filthy uh, lucre. What's, what's, where's that? That's in Titus. Titus yes. chapter 1, verse 7, for a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Now, that, you did say bishop, right? Elder. Well, this is like elder. 
No, they did it. Was the word bishop in there? Uh, let's go back. Now these elder. Oh, just this elder. is this is okay. Paul okay. telling Titus, gather these people to be elders. But yeah, you know what? Um, a uh, couple of churches that the pastors, the House of Jacob Bible Study class, none of the teachers get paid. Is, they work. Israel of God, Brother Bowie doesn't doesn't get paid. Brother Daniel oh, doesn't get paid. Elijah. Yeah. Brother Rodney. Israel, the Church Brother of Jesus. Brother Marlon. Oh. Brother Elijah doesn't get paid. They work. Israel's Church of the Living God, Brother Rodney, the, doesn't get paid. Every oh. Sabbath day they preach and don't get paid. Brother Marlon, the, yeah. the Church of God, I mean, the, the Church of Israel, no payment. Mm -mm. No filthy lucre. Give you me the word. Uh, be, one thing, one reason, um, because they know that they're, they are a man and it, you, you still got to you st a man has to work, especially if you got a family, mm. you know, and they understand. The they, right. Right. And, and they, un so they got to feed the flock, the word, they got to feed their family, you know, and take and uh, be the head. You God put here. Here we go. God put them head over their household and he put them head over his household. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right there. Leviticus chapter 21. Leviticus 21, verse 1. I'm going to read 1 through 8. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people. But for his kin that is near unto him, that is, for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother and for his sister a virgin, that is nigh unto him, which have had no husband for her, may he be defiled. Now, this is God giving the, the instructions to Moses to, to give to Aaron about this is what a priest should be. They're not even supposed to be defiled by being among the dead. They can't even go to a funeral unless it's their mother or father or brother and that well, that we just read there. That's how holy God wants them to be. So you know they didn't want them just working for a filthy lucre. Verse 4. But he shall not defile himself, being a chief man among his people, to profane himself. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Mm. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. They shall be holy unto their God, and not profane the name of their God. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and the bread of their God they do offer. Therefore they shall be holy. They shall not take a wife that is a whore or profane neither shall they take a woman put away from her husband for he is holy unto his god so god's got some strict rules for these priests it should be <laughs> i hate <laughs> to say this but no no i'm glad to say this but them rules for the passage for the priests should be for all the men <laughs> <laughs> really it should be for all the men one wife yeah one wife no whore yeah. and no whoremonger well, if he wouldn't have any, they have no whore mongers, he wouldn't have any whores, right? Exactly. He wouldn't get paid. Verse 8 <laughs> Thou shalt sanctify him, therefore, for he offereth the bread of thy God, he shall be holy unto thee. For I, the Lord, would sanctify you, am holy. So if you're going to be a priest and up there giving the word with, to a ministry, you're supposed to be holy. You can't be like stealing from your flock. You can't be, no, you can't be stealing from your flag. You can't be screwing the whole, all the women in your church behind mm. closed doors. Yeah. It, it, it's just nonsense. It's nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Taking people for granted. Ah. Oh, my gosh. Let's keep going. Isaiah chapter 55. Mm -mm. You know what? If I was the news people... I, I keep him on the news every week. Yeah, he still got his congregation buying him a jet. <laughs> <laughs> I never let him rest. <laughs> I, I would even go wait outside all, all across the street and interview, <laughs> interview them, interview the, wow. uh, the congregation. Uh, so how do you feel about helping your pastor get a plane? You know, they show that stuff on the news every <laughs> once in a while. I mean, once in a while it gets ridiculous and it, it, it goes, oh, goes viral all on all of the regular newscast puts it on it's always on the internet though you can see all kinds of stuff on the internet yeah yeah you can buy anything on but the, the mainstream media doesn't really doesn't really report it you know? Shoot, they should that's oh my god let's keep moving isaiah chapter 55 verse 1 
Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. So this is Isaiah talking about the, the people that are trying to get this word of God. Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come by wine and milk without money and without price. Now, this is not really talking about literally wine and honey. This is talking about come and get the true word of God. It doesn't cost you anything. You don't need any money yeah. to get this word of God. Yeah. So what are you doing paying like? And you don't need to sign a contract to become a member. No. <laughs> no, you go and get the word for nothing. I can't take you because you just left that church. For your own okay, salvation. Okay, because that church ain't right. I'm looking for a new one. Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. You want to tell that story? <laughs> I do. All right. Remember, I just said you don't have to sign a contract to be to be a member of a church. That's okay to give them, you know, your information for, you know, something happened to you in the church. But I went to this. I, I was looking for a church. I got tired of the one I was with. Uh -huh. And so I went to another church out here in the West Suburb. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I get up in there. I'm like, okay, I like this. Meet the pastor and all. And uh, so he, he told me, uh, what church you go to? Well, I said, well, I'm not in the church right now. I just left this church, so I'm looking for a church. Oh, well, now we, I can't accept anybody that just left. And left. You just walked away no, from I've never that heard church. That I, can't, I can't accept you. I can't take you here. I was so crushed. I, I was like, what? I've never heard that I've before. never heard that in my life wait, either. Wait, so you go, you go to a church. And the pastor says you can't join because you just left the church. Yeah, or he 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 felt that I was still part. You still part of that church. So, well, what difference does that make? What difference does it make? I don't want to be there. I want to be here now. Well, maybe you don't. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> you ain't lying. It might be. Uh, I might have to call the police to get me to get out of there. <laughs> okay. They holding me hostage. <laughs> Goodness grief. I never heard that oh, before. Oh, my goodness. So I, you know what? Because now, more I think about it, we're talking about it. That's your church, dude. That ain't God's church. It yeah, just sounds like go. it was your church. You ever think about that, too? Like, all these churches are named after the, the pastor instead of, like, the what the church is? It's not the not the pastor's church. You know? It's like uh, T.D. Jakes' this church. Bill Winston's church. Mm. Clefto Dollar's church. No, it's, it's God's church. Yeah, it is. It's God's church. You know, the pastor is just the one that should be ministering to the people and right. not getting rich it, off it of it. It should be named like Israel or God. You're right. right. Jehovah. You know, not Jehovah's Witnesses, but. No, not Jehovah's Witnesses. But he was called <laughs> Jehovah, too. Yeah, but not. Yeah, actually, Jehovah was Jesus Christ's name in the Old Testament. Or Yah, Yahweh. It's Which was also like Jesus that. Christ's name. And yeah. it's not the Father. You never heard the, we all have to do that the word time. of the Father. You never heard his voice or seen his face at any time. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said. We're going to have to do that. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. We're going to read verse 1. And we're going to skip down to uh, verse 8. Isaiah 30, verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So this is Isaiah. This is a, the Isaiah is preaching, prophesying to the children of Israel. Woe to a rebellious children. Let's get down to verse 4. I'm sorry, verse 8. Verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord. And that's what your preachers give you. They do not give you the law of the Lord. Because you don't want to hear. It. Now this kind of goes both ways. Like the preacher is kind of fleecing you, but you paying to get fleeced. <laughs> you don't want to hear what the true word is. Yeah. Let's yeah. keep reading here. Verse 10. Would say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So if someone tries to give you the real word, the scriptures right from the book. Now nah, I don't want to hear that. Prophesy us some good news and so that I feel good about myself. And then you paying for it too. Yeah. It's really sad. Verse 11. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease before us. This is what the children are saying. This is what the minister, the, the people that go to church are saying. They don't want the real word. They're saying, get the real word out of the way. 
turn the sign out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of Israel, that's Jesus, to cease from before us. They don't want to hear what Jesus has to say. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, therefore the iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Verse 14, and he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take fire from the hearth or to take water with all out of the pit. So basically what he's saying, if you don't want to hear what the true word is and you go into this lion pastor, and ignoring what the true word says, it, then that iniquity is eventually going to catch up with you and going to fall on you. And Jesus Christ is not going to accept you into the kingdom of heaven. There's only only one one other place you can go. I think I think a lot of people get caught up when they have to pay their tithes because mm. the Bible does say you have to pay your tithes, right? Okay, yeah. so pay your tithes. Put your tithes, your ten percent in the envelope, and whatever. Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, uh, tithings and offering, whatever offering. Tithes and offerings, and offering, whatever. And that should be enough. That's it. So now when the pastor come back and ask you for more, uh, you get up and walk up out of there. Mm. That's it. Because mm. now you're trying to put money. You paid your deeds. And now he's still, you still, you guys are still sitting there. So now he wants to come back and ask you guys for more. No, get up. Because now he's going to take your money and put it in his pocket. And then they come up with like, uh, we're going to pass the plate. Now he's pimping you. He's going to come up with a, we're <laughs> passing the plate for another collection. Next next week is past the anniversary. So we got to collect money for that. Says who? Where is that written in the book yeah. to collect some money for past anniversary? Right. And we, we got a special guest today. Past the Bishop so-and-so oh, from, from you know Cincinnati. I, I, I got, oh, oh, my gosh, Jeff. Let me tell you. got to collect some money I for gotta, Look. Since you just said that, I got something mm -hmm. to tell y'all. Yeah. Look, I was a witness. I was I was sitting there. I promise you, it's not a lie. I was a witness. I was sitting there. Mm -hmm. I witnessed mm -hmm. this pastor got paid just to come and, and, and talk to the <laughs> congregation. I saw the money pass from hand to hand. I believe you. I know. I, I'm shocked. That's why I'm like all in all right now. Because I, I would never know. Like, what? Filthy lucre. He came here to just preach a word. What do you say? And like you paid him like fifty dollars well, to did, preach for real? Did he read any scriptures? I don't even or, remember. Or did it was he give so us long, good speech? Long ago. It was so long ago, but I remember seeing that. Did he tell you how his week went? <laughs> Let me tell you, congregation, I had a rough week. Wow. <laughs> I woke up and had a rough week. Wow. Rough Monday. Pretty rough soon, Tuesday. Up it turned to James Brown. I. Rough Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Saturday was all right. I washed my car. Uh, well, well I'm supposed to oh, let's get the Saturday. let's get the uh, band going. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's get the <laughs> give me some music. Uh, you know what? We need like some a hype uh, music. we need like a special effects machine. Mm -mm, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, all right. Oh, I'm so sorry, sorry. Let me stop. But no, no, no. I did witness that. I really did. I witnessed this past pastor came from another church. And came to talk to our congregation about what I don't even remember, but a, it must not been about nothing that our pastor can talk to us about. Mm -hmm. Got paid and left. I believe he it. left up as soon as he got the money. He left. They need to stick around. <laughs> That's messed up. First Timothy chapter three. Wow. So it's, it's so it's a business now. Yeah, it is a business. It's a pimp whore business. You know, that's one thing they say is uh, if the Old Testament is done away with, and you don't have to keep the law no more. Well, tithing is in the Old Testament. Yeah, it is. So why don't they keep that one? First Timothy chapter three, verse one. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, wife vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, right. but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Mm. Yeah. Filthy lucre. Yeah. Very Think true. about it. Think about it. when you go to church, is your pastor just want filthy lucre? 
not just the pastor, the, the whole kind, the whole, the whole thing, the whole church system. Right. Is it about just gain and prosperity? Uh, I mean, you know what? Here's your key as uh, someone sitting in the congregation. Now, I can understand when you first come into church and you're ready to hear the word and you all that. But after you've been sitting there for three years and you see it's the same old repetitive stuff and something inside, deep inside, you say, three I'm, years? I'm, I'm looking for more. Two weeks. Right. <laughs> but something inside of you is telling you, I'm looking for more. I'm not looking for this. Well, I, I need what more. I need mean? more. No, no, no. Something inside of you is telling you, I need more. I'm looking for more. You know, get up because that's when you, you get up and get out of there. You go home and mm -hmm. you go home and you sit and you pray and you talk to the Lord, ladies, with your head covered. Um, if you know about facing the ruling, then face the ruling. But still, if you, even, if you, right, even if you don't, just cover your head because we God, the, Lord is, the Lord is your, co your, your covering at that moment. Mm -hmm. But then that's when you have your moment. And you talk to God like, God, I need the true you. I'm looking for the true you because something is telling you something. That's when a part of you is looking for the true Jesus. You're looking for the true word. And the word is and out wait, here. don't go look. Wait for it. Be patient. Ask the Lord for it. Be patient and wait for it. I promise you he going to send you somebody his way. He going to uh, 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 have you get up one. One of them lessons. And something's gonna you're gonna be flicking you through your TV and you're gonna see yep. somebody on TV that's actually giving you the true word. You're like, what is this? Yep. And they're gonna explain what the Bible actually says. Right. You're gonna be like, oh, that's what that means. Because when you're at that state, that means you are knocking at the door. He said, knock and you will receive. And I'll answer. Yep. Verse three again, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Excuse me. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Didn't I just say that opening up that the Lord put this, get a job because the Lord put you head over your household, the man, and the man, the Lord put the man that seeketh to feed his flock head over that flock. They go, they, they two and two. Verse, go together. Verse six, not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double tongue, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, not greedy of filthy lucre. Mm -hmm. If you're working in the church, this is for anybody anyway. This is anybody. If you're a priest, especially, this is really on you, but don't be greedy for filthy lucre. That's not what it's really about. Okay, we let, the Lord knows that, okay, in this capitalistic system that we live in, we need money to live. Everything works with by, by money. But that shouldn't be, that shouldn't be the, the crust of your whole being. Like, get rich or die trying. No, you don't get rich or die trying. Right. And, yeah. if, you know, another church I had went to, they would pass around paper two places <laughs> oh man god lord i was really <laughs> searching him one that the true him wasn't i so one place i went to they sent out a paper around asking for your uh bank account information what yes they did <laughs> i was like no <laughs> wait a minute what the church asked you for your bank account information yeah, the I, church you want to yeah, go to yes sweetie yes yes they did another one i went to later on they was uh, asking people to throw, donate up to $1,000. What? Yes, sweetie. I guess we were trying to put their kids in college. What's, what's 10% mean? What's a tithe? This tithe means 10%. Oh, and, and it was a challenge. Oh, it was a challenge. I challenge you guys to give at least up from uh, 500 to to $1,000. I say, oh, oh, you'll be challenged because <laughs> I don't have it. You need to give it to me. <laughs> verse 9. I just did not have it. <laughs> First Timothy 3, verse 9. Holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let not these also first be proved. Oh, I'm sorry. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so much their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, because some of these first ladies, <laughs> these pastor wives. Where did that term first lady come from? 
I don't know, but see, I'm going to switch. You're right. I'm going to switch this up to Pastor Why. Some of these Pastor Why, they is just evil as they could be. <laughs> evil. How dare you? You know, be, be kind to the people. Be kind to the ladies. You know, I can understand a little jealousy got to get up in there because you, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Women, we we some devious women. We some devious species. I ain't lying. I'm glad you said that. And we, yeah, because I'm a woman. <laughs> I do know. We are some devious species. And you don't know. You don't, you never know what's on a person's mind. But at the same time, you can't judge a book by its cover because mm. the one book that you think is trying to be this way, it ain't. Ain't. It's really, truly there for the word. So just, you know, some of these pastor wives need to take it easy, sit down, relax. As a matter of fact, just sit back and watch. Because it's going to be all in your face and you'll be able to just close your mouth, sit back, watch. And and um, what's the word I'm looking for? And um, just review, Pete. Just just look at them. Um, uh, your fruits. No, yeah. just just look. Just pay attention. Just pay attention. They're they going to tell you, you know, women, we give off signals. That's how stupid some of us are. We, we can't be uh, incognito. Hey, pastor. <laughs> what? Jeff, I'm telling you, you just Wait a minute, don't so know. The, the woman be hitting on the pastor? Oh, the pastor be getting it on? Didn't you see that article when they showed us? <laughs> I don't, oh. One pastor over in Africa had all his women sitting in the front with no panties oh, on. Yeah, I remember that. Come on now. I remember that. A whole row with no panties on. Get out of here. <laughs> you can't come up in here with no drawers on. I got to get to you. That's Pastor need shabby. a break. I'll be right back. Sister, Sister Jones, come on with me. <laughs> Get out. Verse 12. Verse 12. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. Oh, my God. Not 12 in the front Cock of the congregation. <laughs> Ruling their children and their own houses well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Jesus Christ. We're going to take a break. You know, I, uh, I, I got to say, you know, I, I'm sitting up here joking, but I'm serious. as a heart attack. I'm very, not going to say heart attack, but I'm very serious. I'm very serious. But we'll be right back after these messages. You missed the first half hour. You missed it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry. Go you can go back watch. on Facebook and uh, grab this one. <laughs> All right. Evolution Pop. Evolutionpop.com. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're talking about filthy lucre. Filthy lucre being monetary gain and how that's prevalent in these churches today. Not just for the pastors, but this prosperity ministry that's out there as well. For mm -hmm. the pastors, even tell their ministry, you give me five thousand dollars and you'll get yours later on. So, right. So, so you're just looking for your own prosperity too. Right. So you know what, you guys. Stay away from the prosperity churches. Yeah, they just want it's your It's not money. about prosperity. It's about, it's about making it in the kingdom. That's what it's supposed to be about. Yep. Eternal life. Eternal no one ever life. tells you that, do they? The whole reason of following this word is to get eternal life at the end. That's right. That's right. You're all going to die. What are you going to do with your filthy lucre then? Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't bribe God with it. No, you can't. Let's keep going here. We're, on, uh, we're at Isaiah chapter 56. We're going to pick it up at verse 9, Isaiah 56 and 9. Let me read 9 through 12. All ye beasts of the field come to devour, yea, all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen, and who are the watchmen? The watchmen are the priests out there, the preachers. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs, which can never have enough. I got one jet. I need another one. They are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his, for his gain from his quarter. Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine and we will fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as this day and much more abundant. This is telling you, this is giving you a warning. Stay away from these preachers that are just greedy dogs. And they can never have enough. Just think about it. Look at the, the kind of cars that they drive. How many houses do they have? They got jets. They suits. Suits. And jewelry. And, and what? How does, that, how does that benefit the ministry? When you're getting fleeced, and what do you got? 
they're asking you for if you if you got a thousand dollars you can sit in the middle row you got five thousand dollars you can come up front the guy's not any respect to a person look you guys you guys got to look at the, their fruits what kind of fruit oh gosh what kind of fruit fruit are they putting out there for you you tell the tree by its fruit all right yep let's go to um first timothy and not and not just uh how crowded they churches because you could have about five people in there and you and you sitting in the awesome under an awesome pass hmm. not first timothy philippians sorry yeah go, go ahead that's it philippians philippians chapter three and verse one philippians three verse one we're going to read uh one through three finally my brethren rejoice in the lord to write the same things to you to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Didn't we just hear about the greedy dogs? Yes, we did. Beware of evil workers. No, we say that over. Be beware of who? Beware of dogs. Now, there's a couple of different definitions for dogs. <laughs> greedy greedy pastors is a, is what God calls dogs. Yep, yes, he does. Homosexuals is also what God calls dogs. Mm, wow. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers. We're talking about the greedy pastors on this one. Though. This is prosperity, filthy lucre. Beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are of the circumcision with worship, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So this filthy lucre is not going to get you anything. You might live, live large today while you're here on earth, but it's given that given once to for every man to die unless you make it when Jesus Christ return and you make the first resurrection. And then everyone gets changed. And then you get changed. And you they won't, first they, they, they're not going to even make a resurrection. Well, <laughs> well, they will, but you know. Well, that's not, the first resurrection. Then there's a second res resurrection as well. That's they the won't judgment. be in the first. The greedy dogs, they, no, they, know. they won't they, be in the Unless they repent. Unless they repent. Exactly. Unless they repent. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 1. First Timothy 6. Oh, boy, boy, I'm thinking, man, I couldn't, what? if I was a guy, I couldn't be a, if I'm going to be a pastor, I don't know if I want to, would I want a wife? I don't know, because I would want to walk, I would want no distractions, mm -hmm. and I would want to, I would want to walk a very straight path. Well, yeah, you want to do that anyway. Yeah, that's what I try to do anyway, you know, but yeah, I hear what do you're you saying. Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I know it nobody's perfect, right? But we strive to be. We strive to keep this book, keep this word. That's what we're trying to do. Got that on air, y'all. First Timothy <laughs> chapter six. No, listen. There. Verse one. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. The name of God and his doctrine. They'll Jesus you to death. Right. But will they give you his teachings and his doctrine? You know, uh, I'm gonna. I just got it. Okay, so what's coming to me is like, okay, the reason why I said that, uh, what I, if I'm gonna, if I was a guy, because of course women, no, we can't be pastors. So mm -hmm. if I was a guy, I would take this word very because it's serious. Yeah, it's serious. You, you be, you be, you know, you gotta be careful leading people to hell. That's true. Oh man, that's that's a major thing on a man's shoulder. Mm -hmm. That's major. Yeah, if you want to take up this, you want to take up this. This, this cross, you know what? <laughs> Bear this, this cross. This is bigger than becoming a president. Mm -hmm. This is bigger than the president. Yeah, you're leading people to either be righteous for God or to sin against them. That's so true. Verse two, and they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine, which is according to godliness, he is proud, is your pastor proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth. Supposing that gain is godliness. Supposing that gain is godliness. So if I got a bunch of money, well, it must be, I must be godly because God gave me all this money. No, that's not what that means at all. <laughs> Supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. 
So if anyone's teaching you that yep. the more you got, then you've, you've been blessed with all this love. If someone's teaching you that this prosperity is, is, is godly, withdraw from such, withdraw thyself. That's what right. this book just says. First Timothy 6, and that was verse 5. We're reading it to you. I didn't write none of this. God gonna bless. Well, yeah, God could bless you. He could. Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong. We'll right. get to some scriptures later. Okay. It's okay if you if to be rich. If you want to, to be, you, you want to be, it's okay to be well off and, and comfortable, but right. you can't forget God. And you can't make that your pursuit. The root of all the, the pursuit of the root, the money is the root to all money evil. is the root of all evil. Right. We're gonna read that later too. And then I'll I'll read it correctly. Verse six. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Right. And having food and raiment, let us be let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into the temptation of a snare, yeah. a temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which draw, which drown men in destruction and perdition mm. so you're striving to get all this money and wealth what are you actually doing for you, are you how much are you selling yourself out Passive. to get this game what scripture was that again Rich? this is first timothy chapter six wow and that was verse nine but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition right, perdition is another name for destruction verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. Right. Which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So you're doing all this immoral stuff so you can get some money and some gain. And then how do you feel about it once you get it? Right. How many rich rich people, super rich people, they've been successful, they got everything they want, then they commit suicide? What's up with that? Mm. They're still lonely. I don't get they still that. still haven't gotten every, what you you you. But but what they say, but the song by uh, U2. I would think but, the poor people be the ones that want to commit suicide. Right? But, but the song by U2, I, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Oh, okay. Yeah, by U2. I still haven't but found still what I'm looking for. Haven't found what, what I'm, I'm looking okay. for. Okay, I know I don't have that. Yeah. Verse, verse yeah. 12. Verse that, 12. That, that song is true. It's yeah. True. That's amazing. Verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. What did we see early, earlier? Eternal life. That's what the, the, that's what the, that's what um, the thing is about. Right. That's what this um, whole strive after the Lord, trying to make it into king, in the kingdom. Right. Whereunto eternal thou life. art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. That's what you're seeking after, eternal yeah. life. Yeah. You know, God will provide for you if you keep his word and do what he says to do. He'll provide for you. You know we need clothing and housing and, and, and food. Some transportation. Yeah. Yeah, all that. He does He'll take know. care of that stuff for you. He does know. Yep. Let's go to. Uh, he even knows when you're lonely and, and a, you know, man and woman, if you want a husband, you know, but you got to be right mm -hmm. if you want if you want those things. He ain't going to give you something if you, what, just, you just want it just. For your own lust. For your own lust, exactly, exactly. But just for your own lust, yeah. Matthew ten verse one. Matthew chapter ten, pick it up at verse one. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now this is this is Jesus Christ. Um, they talk about the disciples. His, his disciples. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Let's get down to verse five. This one likes it, this is what this is about. And then the, the verses two through four goes on the names of the 12 disciples. Verse five, these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now Jesus actually is telling the disciples, don't go to any other people except the the Israelites, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8 Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers from the dead, cast out devils freely. Ye have received, freely give. Freely ye have received, freely give. Verse 9 Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, for scrip. 
nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet stays, for the workman is worthy of his meat. So this is saying, okay, you're out there preaching the word. Don't take anything with you, no gold, no silver, nothing. Go out there. And as you preach this and word, don't even the people, think it. Right, the people, will, right, the people will, will provide for you. You're giving, you're giving them the word of God. So they don't even have to worry about any of that stuff. Right. They're not out there looking for filthy worker. They're preaching the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Not for gain. But these some of these pastors, they they looking for it. But you oh, yeah. You That's what they get into the business for. That's why they're in the business. Wow. Second Thessalonians chapter six. I'm, I'm sorry, Second Thessalonians chapter three. Two Thessalonians. You know the um uh, Catholic Church, they um I don't think they pass the basket around. I think you just go up and drop it in. I have no idea. I, I've been in it. I've been in the Catholic Church. Yeah. I remember I went to a Catholic yeah. Church. The first thing I said, it was two things. One, you had the Jesus Christ, well, the, another Jesus hanging on the wall on the cross yeah, yeah, yeah. and big hanging on the wall on the cross yeah. in front of the congregation. Then on the side, you had like this water, water yeah. running. It's supposed to yeah. be the holy water. Or it's just in a, uh, like a I don't fountain know. It was, like a, it was like a fountain or something right. there. I was like, let me get out of here. Yeah, I think they yeah. just. Uh, they look spooky can, to me. If I can remember, I think. I'm not trying to talk about it. Don't get me wrong. Hey, people got their faith, but did that just look kind of. Well, I, I'm I'm on the thing of passing the baskets around. I'm mm. trying to remember. Did they pass it back, or you just go up and drop your envelope in? Because I don't I don't remember. I really don't remember them asking for your tithes and all. Oh, maybe they did. But that was just it. The only time that I really been that really spent time they in didn't a, in ask a Catholic no, church it wasn't no was two like times. At a wedding. I it won two times. Mm. It was never two times. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. at least they got that right, maybe. Yeah. But the only time I really uh, I've never like really heard like a uh, uh, a Catholic sermon, except the stuff they show on TV, maybe. But actually going there, only time I really been was like for a wedding or something. Mm. But uh, you know, the times I've been in there, you see like all of these statues and some symb yeah, symbols yeah, and yeah. things. And it's like. Uh, it it didn't, didn't feel right to me. But hey, read the book. Get your get your find your own understanding and, and do what the book actually says, not what people are telling you or these other false religions that are out there. Second Thessalonians chapter three and verse six. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after tradition. And, and not after the tradition which he received of us. For now this is Paul talking to the Thessalonians. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Neither did we eat any man's bread, nor not, but wrought with labor and travail. So this is Paul talking to the Thessalonians saying, we didn't eat anybody else's bread. We worked and labored yeah, for our own there stuff. You go. Now they're out there, there preaching, go. but they're not taking no money from nobody. Right. This and is a time. Yeah, they work their own labor. Yeah. And travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. There's like no mm -hmm. excuse. We're not going to say we're doing this to get any kind of gain from your, yeah. you're not paying for this. So what they're trying to say, you know, we ain't going to be that. We ain't going right. to like have that type of responsibility. You ain't going to be saying that we did this. We did. We right. <laughs> right. Using us to take it from y'all. Right. Verse 9, right. not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Yeah. So Paul That's is out it. there laboring and working and still giving the word of God, but not taking any money for it. Oh, what, what, what scripture was that? Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Come on now. <laughs> Come on. Verse 10, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Eat. Verse 10, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. That goes to you pastors because you're still a man. Yes, you you're are. You're a man first. Get out and get a job. Get a job. And stop feeding off your flock. Yeah. Crazy. First Samuel chapter 8, back to the Old Testament. One Sam. Chapter 8, verse 1. We're going to read 1 through 3. 
And it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. This is really about Samuel's sons. Now, the name of his firstborn was Joel. It's, it's, I think his other name is Vashti, too. I think it's called Vashi or something like that. And the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre mm -hmm. and took bribes and perverted judgment. Now, what is your passage on? Is he taking a lucre? There you go. It's right there. They you walk know, that's amazing. After, it happened back then and it's happening now. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Not after Samuel. Samuel was one of the greatest prophets in the Bible. Yeah, he was. He aw awesomely was. Revelation 22. The book of Revelation, last book in the Bible, verse chapter 22, verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Who is this? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Wait a minute. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, that's Jesus Christ. Yeah. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Whose commandments? Jesus, Jesus Christ's commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs, the greedy dogs, and sorcerers, the lazy dogs. And then she's lumping these in with these dogs are sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So these greedy dogs are lumped in with these same type of people here. Jesus should have said whoever. What they say? Uh, whoever keepeth. He should have said whoever keepeth my commandments. <laughs> On, Verse 16, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning yeah, star. That's right. Mark chapter 10, the book of Mark chapter 10. Verse 23, Mark 10, 23. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his, at his words. But Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Very hard. 25. It is easier for a camel yeah. to go through the eye of a needle yeah. than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. 26. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And Jesus, looking upon them, said, with men it is impossible, but with God, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Yeah. Luke, verse 6. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 6. I keep on seeing verse. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 6, verse 24. I'm just going to read this one, this one scripture. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Mm -hmm. uh, you got your money. You're rich. You ain't worried about nothing else. Okay, yeah, there's your reward. I got and what's what's going to happen when you die? Can't take it with you. What's going to happen? Oh, they're going to leave it to their pets. <laughs> mm -hmm. They dog, they cat. Not not to any poor people. Not to a um, um, the, the sh a homeless shelter. Not mm -hmm. to anybody in your family. Wow. Well, someone's going to get it. The state, <laughs> <laughs> the government, or the state. Yeah. Well, well you, you ain't right. gonna get it. What I'm saying, they gonna, you ain't gonna have it no more. Get it. The state gonna, gonna get it. Yeah. They gonna get some of it. <laughs> they got that estate tax. What's that? What do the Republicans call it? The death tax? Is that's oh, not what it's for, man? It's not the death. But it's the estate tax. So if you died and whatever, whoever you leave your money to, they have to pay like a tax on that. And the Republicans like, but the the think the limit is like like. Ten million dollars or something that you leave that, that anything over that gets taxed like two percent. I don't know what the percentage is. Of course. And they're fighting against that. They don't want to give us nothing, man. Mm -hmm. They don't give nothing. First Timothy chapter six, yeah. verse seventeen. This will be our last. Seventeen through nineteen. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded. So it's okay to be rich, but be not right, high-minded, right. nor trust in uncertain riches. So okay, it's all right to be rich. But don't trust in that. Because, you know, a lot of people, they work to get, yeah. really, truly work to get to yeah. where they're at. Nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. That they do good, 
that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So no matter how much money you got, no matter how rich you are or how poor you are, the goal here is to follow this book, do what the God, do what the God's going to tell you to do, because the end result is what you're trying to get is eternal life, not right. a bunch of money. Yep, that's it. That's what it is. That is it. That's the goal. That is the goal. That is the goal. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Evolution Pop. Pop. I hope you I guys mean, uh, the Bible show on evolutionpop.com. Yeah.